Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, uh, it's going to be um, three parts or maybe two, um, and it's going to be how to create um, fire. So uh, we're going to create the smoke, the part, the particles, uh, the fire itself, and uh, the little flickering of light, which will be uh, in part three, part two. So. Um, start off with so this is this is the final product we should have so you can see it quite well in the uh, viewport so um start off with oh, let me just delete all this because we're gonna be able to start from the beginning so yep yeah. so to start off with um we're gonna need the fire and do, uh, this video didn't come out uh, it's probably been about a week or two weeks since my last tutorial, um, and that's one of the reasons was because I couldn't find any sort of fire texture, so uh, I've had to create it. So um, there should be a link in the description for the actual uh, for the uh, fire files. So um, yeah, just download that, and uh, when you've done that, just just come back and we'll get on with it. So. Uh, to start off with, you're going to want to go to create geometry standard perimeters, you know, the default, and uh, create a plane. And um, just, just draw it out. And go to the modify panel and uh, make the length sex to, you know, 4. Ignore the fact that I had it 70, I don't know why that was that. And um, change the length to. 60 and the width to 50 and uh, or you could do the other way around if you want um, so um, let me just reset my material to material at the slots and then um, in the first material slot, um, with your plane selected, assign assign material to selection, which will be the third button over, from right beside the the uh, red X, and uh, and the little checkered symbol, uh, fourth symbol from the uh, right. Turn that on, just so that we don't forget that. And in the shader basic parameters, make sure you do this because there's always a comment about this. Um, turn two sided on because planes are normally only one sided um, objects, so you will see it, in, it'll be invisible from the other side, which is not going to work real. So, after you've done that, you're going to want to go to diffuse unknown uh, and to choose bitmap and then you're going to want to look for the the uh, fire image sequence you're going to you're going to notice that it's very likely to be uh it's going to be about 18 frames i think so uh 18 images uh there'll be an image sequence there should be two image sequences so uh, so when you find the fire um folder that um you've downloaded um, go to fire underscore zero 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 and make sure sequence is ticked and um, go to setup and uh, just click OK or if you've or just click open and it will probably come up with it if it doesn't then you know go to setup so um, just click OK and it should load it in, in your viewport and at least in 2012 it will show up in the viewport as animated if it isn't then um, then it could be you might have a, uh, an older version of 3ds Max and it might not be available or you may have to enable it somewhere in the uh, viewport settings somewhere um, if if it requires a uh, an option to be ticked somewhere I'll mention it in the description or in a, an annotation so uh, just go through and you should notice that it just keeps looping which is good because underneath the bitmap parameters there's time and there's a 
there's a end condition and it will just continue to loop which is good and I tried to get it as well timed as possible so you don't notice when it changes but uh, you may notice it but it should be should be good enough so um, yeah so after you've done that um, and make sure it's two-sided or you won't see both sides um, what you're gonna want to do is um, from inside the material, uh, um, the bitmap uh, part, you need to go to go to parent, which is the second from the right on this bar. So just click go to parent, and you will notice there's a. Uh, we need to add an opacity because if you were to render it now, you will. Oops, if you were to render it now, you will notice. That it's black, and we don't want that. So we're going to have to go into the opacity and click the little box beside it, and add another bitmap. Now there should be another, um, another file there, uh, a fire, which is the alpha version of it. So the white will stay, and the black will be taken away. So uh, just. Do the same as you did with the fire and make sure sequence is uh, ticked and just open it and just OK it. And then you're going to want to make sure that everything is correct and it should get rid of it. Now, yours will likely still have the black in it. So, um, I've, as far as I know, it's definitely in 2012. Um, to make sure it's transparent in the in the viewport, if you really want it to be, you don't have to. You can it'll, when you render it, it will be still transparent, so it wouldn't matter either way. It's just you might want it um, transparent. So for anyone who's got the ability to do this, it's always a idea. So uh, click on realistic or shaded or whatever it is beside perspective or whatever that is, um, and you should get a little lots of little options go down to materials and make sure enable transparency is ticked but also uh, click on realistic materials with maps and that should then go all checkerboard and all the tra transparency should show up uh, in the uh, viewport which would make it like this so now that you've done that um, you pretty much create the fire but and if you were going to put it on the side of a block, then this is probably the kind of way it's going to look. But um, for anyone who wants to make just a proper fire, put it on the ground, um, just uh, position it correctly, so just center it, and bring it up. And what you're going to want to do is is um, get the shape correct. So uh, let's create another one so uh with the rotation tool um selected um make sure this angle snap toggle is on make sure that you shouldn't have anything different for the defaults for that and just hold down shift and rotate it 90 degrees and then just copy and it should now look like that then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold down shift and you're going to want to uh, whoops. you're going to want to uh, bring it to the edges of all the uh, the fires you may want to use wireframe if you want to make it really even and just uh, hold down shift and you know just Try and get uh, those in the right position. And as you can see, it doesn't look very good at the moment. So, what we're going to want to do is also we're going to want to set the two in the middle. Yes, let one of those in the middle, and you're going to want to just just position it off slightly. And if you're doing the same size uh, sizes as me, then uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move this about minus four from the center one direction and then you're going to want to copy it again 
you want to go four with no minuses. So you should have two parallel from each other. You want to do the the same thing with the uh, the other direction one. So uh, oh, whoops, wrong. Make sure it's the right angle as well. And you've got all those correct, but now we need to to uh, add s something to it. So so let's just render and check how it how it is going. It should look all right. There may be in the uh, viewport you may notice a bit of a line of fire at the top. Those probably will not show up in um, in the uh, render, which so you could you could pretty much ignore those. If if there's an issue, just use UV Dobby maps. Uh, if, if I'm um, I'll leave it in the description how to do that. It should be it's very simple. Just fix that. So um, after you've done that, what you're going to want to do is select one of the uh, inside fires if you can get to it. Uh, and then what you're going to do is go to modify list, and there hopefully should be. I'm not sure if there's an old uh, in older versions of the uh, 3ds Max. If there's a, if there is, I believe there is in 2011 at least. Um, I go down to FFD four times four times four, and you should get these weird little grid like thing. So when you've done that, um. Click the little cross by the FFD and go to the control points and then select the top four. And now, when you move these, they'll bend the fire. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try and we're going to make it overlap the other fire. So, uh, use use the grids from, from the wireframe. So, by pressing uh, F3, you should go into that. If you can't, then in the top corner, go to wireframe. But, uh, you know, just try to get it at a certain position. So I'm just going to go for this. So you can see it's 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 bent in that direction, and then do the same for the for the others in the middle, which it can get very chaotic if you can't see. Now, if you're stuck in this, just make sure that you aren't still in control points, and just go to FFD, and then se select another one and do the same. So FFD, cross control points and set the top four and guide them over as just like I did on the other side and they should now be over each other and again with the ones in the different direction shouldn't take you too long to do this um, So FFD four times four, and set the top ones, and you move them over. And now you've got the, the the middle ones should be about right now. But now we're going to want to change the the ones on the outside. Pretty much the same, but we're not going to overlap them. We're just going to move them in slightly. So just uh, select one of the ones at the outside. FFD. Um, you don't even have to go to the cross, you can just click it once after you've added it and it will just take you to the control points straight away. And just, just bend it a tiny bit. You know, use the, the use the grids that you see in the wireframe for, for, for guidance if you need it. And just uh keep adding them. And if you if you if anyone's wondering why I can rotate around it without having to go to this little cube, just hold down Alt and use the mouse wheel to dra drag it around and it'll do it. So, uh, yeah.
So after we have done this, I believe we should now have our fire working. So there you go. I believe we now have fire. So, yay. So, I'm going to leave it there for this tutorial, um, for now. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll add the smoke that goes above it, all the little particles. Um, I would do it in the same tutorial, but uh, it's, gonna, it's going into a new kind of thing that um, I haven't explained before with particle systems that uh, particle flow so it's better to have its own tutorial and then we'll go into lighting which I'll explain more about the about lights as well not just the fire for the fire but for the torches and how to get a, how to get daylight in the scene and all that so um, uh, thank you for for watching if you like the video um, share it like it um, leave a comment if you if you if you need any help, um, just leave a comment as well, and I'll try and help you if I can. I'll try to reply. So um, thank you for watching, and goodbye.